Rick. Hey, man. What's up? How you doing? How are you? I'm fantastic. You look good. Oh, I, I do? Yeah, Where you do. You? Where you at? How you been? I'm good. How you doing? Good. Is that the big documentary this weekend now? Yeah. Do you know Will Harris? Will Harris, I think. I, I'm not sure if I do or not. Well, he's right here. He said, what's up? What up, Rick? Hey, man. What's going on? How are you? Are you the ESPN? No. I'm with, I'm with Anatomy of a Fighter. I don't know. Did he mention it? He wanted to? I know. I was going to text him, but then he's a little more awkward, too. Man, come. I moved to Minnesota my seventh grade year. So I'm 21 now. That was probably eight, nine years ago. Um, probably the best move I've ever made in my life. Me and my family, This, I think this is really the, the best place to be for us. It opened up so many doors for, for myself especially and for my brother and for my mom and dad too. And I think life here is a lot different than it is in Indiana. And I mean, not, nothing really else to say. This is a nice city, nice place, nice people here. So many great places to go and so many good friends here too. My oldest son, John, he started wrestling when he was eight years old and we put him out there on the mat to wrestle at eight years old and he lost his first match and he cried and cried and cried and I was like god gracious what do we just get our family into what is this and um, watch Bobby follow the footsteps of his brother and then watch Gable follow the footsteps of Bobby and remembering my oldest son say mom watch 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 they're gonna be better than I am this is probably the prized possession of the house, the Danny Hodge Trophy. Um, Danny Hodge recently passed away this past year, so this trophy means um, a bigger deal. Um, what this is, this is the Heisman Trophy of wrestling. If you get this, you're the, you're the baddest man that year in the NCAA tournament and through the whole season. What, this, what the Hodge Trophy means to wrestling is just like the Heisman Trophy means to football. It's um, performance on the mat, sportsmanship, competition you wrestle, how bad do you beat guys? And me and Spencer Lee of Iowa, the 125 pounder, got this of this year. And we'll run through some of my other stuff. This is probably, this is a cool thing right here. This is kind of a funny story. So my senior year of high school, just a couple of years ago, I won the, the All Metro Sports Athlete of the Year, whatever it's called. And um, they were like, um, in 2020, are you gonna, how, how are you gonna go about the Olympics? And I was like, and I said it to the crowd, there's a crowd of people, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be on the Olympic team. And like people cheered and all that, but I was like, I was being 100% like that ass. I was being serious. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be an Olympic team. And like, not three years later, them same people like, damn, Gable's on the Olympic team. And we're talking to Gable Stevenson, and he's won his fifth folk style nationals title, winning in the novice division, and had a great run of success here. I mean, how much fun has this been? It's real fun. Yeah, what, what do you like about wrestling here? Good competition, lots of matches. And tell us about your your name. Uh, you have an interesting name. It's Gable Dan Stevenson, named yeah. after the wrestler. Yeah, so it's my mom kept my mom and dad kept hearing that name over and over at tournaments with my older brother. And it's just, my dad said that's just a cool name. It's, name it's a funny question because I don't know how me and Robert did it. He watched his brother, his older brother, wrestle, and he um, would um, climb on his back, jump on top of him, roll around with him on the floor. And I can always see Bobby just in the background, just watching, and always a tumbling type of kid. When did he start to take wrestling? Serious? When he came over to Apple Valley High School, probably. I think my junior Hodge trophy's in here. Oh yeah, it's right here. This is where my dad be kicking it at. You know, Bobby always say he was the workhorse when he was younger. You know, 
Gable wanted to socialize, and that came, became into you know fisticuffs because one wasn't, one didn't want to work, and the other one did. You know, as they grew older, you know, I remember, you know, Bobby a sophomore in high school back in Indiana. You know, nobody wanted to practice with him. So, you know, his brother, he was seventh grade at the time. You know, he would have to come in every day and practice with him. And, you know, Gable, you know, he could he could work so long. You know, then, it, then I'd see him throwing fists at each other because, you know, Bobby's mad because Gable's not working hard that he, that he should be. So a little, you know, gradual, gradual progression, but they were they were competitive at, at everything, whether it was rollerblading, whether it was riding a bike, you know, always playing, you know, catch or with the football or baseball. This 2020, this 2019 NCAA trophy, I took third place. I was a freshman. This is probably the trophy that that changed everything, that made me wanna maybe wanna go harder and, and be the best version that Gabe I can be. So we'll put that back. Fast forward, after COVID, after everything, I come back home, and let me tell you, to whoever sees this video, this little doc that's going on, this bad boy right here will change your whole life, will change everything. Just from winning this, winning the Hot Trophy upstairs, I've seen the world, I've met so many people, the opportunities have grown through the world. People have seen my athleticism, the backflips, the winning matches by a lot of points. This right here, this is what starts you off. And so keep grinding. This is what will turn you up to the max. What is it you like about wrestling? All of it. Yeah. I like, I like all the stuff. I like just being out of the mat all the time. Going to practice every day. Just working. Yeah, and winning's kind of fun too, huh? People be like, uh, you from Minnesota, they, they have no clue how beautiful and nice it is up here, do they? Nah, people be like, it's a random state. This is a nice state, like, really nice. Every, anything to do, boating, Mall of America, there's so much to do here. People don't understand. It's good vibes, for sure. How we doing, bro? Yeah, how you doing? This is Nick, my dog. Sleeves it either. How we doing? Talk about this dude, man. Gable, he's something special. He's the real deal, man. I mean, I'm proud as fucking shit as him, man. <laughs> this dude's going crazy. I mean, he's putting the work in, grinding, and uh, he just keeps on proving everything wrong. Like, against all odds, man's on top. For sure. Let's get to it. So, Gable, congratulations. I know, it's been a long time. NCAA championship. Ooh. We were in Arizona, wow. and I was wearing my earbuds walking the dog, and all of a sudden I heard you being interviewed in the radio that morning. And That's I was like, crazy. whoa, I know him. I feel so cool. So in which weight? Heavyweight. Like we talked about in the car, the lifestyle you want to live, you got to put in that work. This is this is that. My homie's crib. I'm happy he lets me come over and, and do my thing here. And let, let's, it goes on the boat with all of us, so it's cool. but. Hopefully one day I'm gonna hit him up and say, come out on mine. That's the vibe. That's what we want. That's what we want. And so this is like we already know Nick, Griffin, the house owner, and Pete. Peter. With the Charlotte Hornets on. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Trust the boogie yogi till I free my mind. Touch the boogie yogi till I feel alive. I feel it inside. I'm feeling the vibe on. Uh. We like to, we like to jam, we got the funk, we like to keep out the man, slip in with ten toes down, we got the pump, we like to keep out the gas, we like to, we like to fly, get out the way, we about to clear out the sky, ain't no fear in the sky, ain't you feeling the vibe, ain't you feeling the healing, this is hard, it's way different, but that's just fun, I ain't got nothing to lose, I ain't got time to pretend, and I got God on my side, gave his life for the guy, I'ma live with the Lord, Satan trying to take what I feel to destroy, instead of chewing on my knees and I'm praying that my feet don't fail me now. I'm on the front line, I got the move, I got some things to, I got the proof, you in the trees, go tell me how. I got the watch, I got some posted, I got the touch, I had the dream, I felt the rush, I see the face, we all the same, I know you hurt, I feel your pain, I am the one, I'm about to lean, I'm about to sweat, I'm about to bleed, I'm about to give you what you really need, I'm about to give it and you gon' receive, I'm about to turn you down into belief, I'm about to make sure you boogie with me. Just the 
the boogie, tip top and turn. Trust the boogie, a beat till I free my mind. Touch the boogie, a beat till I'm feeling alive. I feel it inside, I'm feeling the vibe. Try to get by here by 25. It's my goal. By 25, get out here. What do you think of doing after a nice year? WWE. What? WWE or fight. Whichever one, you know, it's all about dollar signs when I when I leave, so. Yo, I'll be, like, your, I'll be your private bow captain, bro. Okay, come on. <laughs> what floor is he? You can't eat legacy. Red. Can't eat legacy. You can create your own legacy to get bread, but your kids can't eat it. That they gotta so create their own. I thought about it, and I was like, damn. Right. That's crazy. I say five, six years, I'm trying to hit here. Off the mat, I do not think about wrestling. I tend to to shy away from it. I don't like to talk about it. But when it's my time to show up and, and do my job on the wrestling mat, that's when I bring out my my emotions for people to see. I think Balancing, balancing a regular lifestyle is, is fairly easy to me because I've been practicing, that for, practicing at it for a long time now. Being able to shy away from the wrestling part, being able to go on the boat, relax with my friends, go to the mall, see, see sightseeing and, and everything. I mean, people gotta understand that wrestling is, ath ath athletes as a whole, athletics is only this much of our life. We still have this much to go. And I think at a young age, I've learned that and I've learned to cope how to do my two hours in the wrestling room, weight room, whatever, and then when I leave, it's me time, it's all me, because I think you can get caught up in living that lifestyle that you gotta think about wrestling 24 seven, you gotta breathe it, you gotta be there, you gotta do everything perfect to be that wrestler. And you can have a regular social life and, and be a great wrestler. I think I'm doing well for myself right now with it, and I like having my own time, I like playing the Xbox and playing Fortnite and Call of Duty. It's just, that's me. A lot of people have to do that every day, think about wrestling, and. I think me balancing it right now, I'm doing perfect and I love what I do. Wrestling's still fun to me, and but my social life is the most important, the best thing too. I gotta go pick up my bro, Roman Brava Young, Penn State National Champ at 133. Probably one of my best homies. Um, I gotta go get him at midnight, so I'm gonna be up, active, take care of business, and we're gonna go back home, sleep, and get ready for tomorrow. When it comes to success, I'll probably define success as being the best possible person that you can be, um, carrying a legacy on your shoulders, going about things day to day, and uh, just maintaining the person that you, that you are all the time. Success comes in so many different ways. Um, people, people think success comes with many gold medals, money, fame, power. But in my, in my book, success comes from being the same person that you are all the time, no matter how much money, fame, and power that you get. We got TNT Academy, we got Showtime Performance. We came together, we put this thing together, man. And we giving you nothing but elite experience, right? Out here in Minnesota, a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, you'll see it, and on the surface, it'll look like it's all just clean cut, whatever. We here to change the whole narrative on that, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of talent out here, but it's a lot of kids being sheltered out here. We here to break that. You know what I'm saying? So when you come in here, you come in, it's all work. You know what I'm saying? No play. So we getting busy out here and we pretty to be very elite. Hey, we was made for this. Stuck to the paper like a paper clip. Just saying this. Accolades talking, you ain't saying shit. Got a lot to give, but it's a waste if you just saving it. You thinking about an air ball, I'm knowing that we making it. Always optimistic. Big hits, no hit stick. Right here. Yes, they was right, they was right, bro. Got the future shining brighter than a light bulb. They want to take away my games like it's light bulb until I go psycho. They show you who's bad like Michael. Better come correct, no typos. I go off on every beat like a rifle. I know that I'm We're gonna be right here. We can't blow it up. Oh, it's too sick. Numbers don't lie and we stay growing. Yeah, I was born ready. Born ready. I was born ready. I'ma make a way if they don't let me. Determination from my soul like a we are the chosen ones that when the moment come, ain't no controlling us. All that we know is up. We are the chosen ones, letting the top down, holding the spot down. There's no way to stop now. We better hold on, hold on, hold on. We better hold on, hold on. We gonna have to hold on. Hey, we all born with a day.
destiny. Losing, it, it really is 100% all on you. Winning is 100% all on you. If you make one flaw in a wrestling match, you can lose a match three to two, or you can win a match 15 to zero. It just depends on how you go about that match. Wrestling as a whole, I mean, it's, it's so hard to, to dissect and develop. There's so many positions. There's so many things that you have to master to be the best person ever at wrestling. There's, there's so many great wrestlers that, that lose matches just because there's one flaw. You can lose with one second left. You can lose by one point, a millisecond. It's, it's crazy how wrestling goes. Being able to understand that it is all you at the end of the day. There's no one to blame. There's no one else to look at. When you step on that mat, there's six minutes of you versus someone else. There's not a team figure of, of six minutes and you and a team goes out there. It's you versus one other person that's bigger, stronger, faster, or slower, weaker. It's you or them at the end of the day. That's what makes the wrestling so important. Always working, you know, I like that speed, good stuff, different, switch it up a little bit, you know. Can't always do the same stuff every time or it gets old. Did you ever play uh, any other sports? Yeah, I actually played football when I was younger. So it's good, I like it. Nah, just a little too small right now. Hey man, the workout was a great workout. We did our thing. Wrestlers don't really work out how like these football players work out, so it was great to do something new. Me, Bobby, and Roman had a great time. Shout out to TNT House of Elite. We're here, we came to show out, we did. Back home, get our hair cut, teeth clean, go about our day. Nah, tell her to come. You both come. Go enjoy yourself. Thanks for calling me. No, nah, no, nah, thank you for being a part of this. Nah, well, thank you. Thank you for calling. Hey, say what's up to my brother real quick. Uh, what's up, Rick? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? What you like wrestling around with him in the front yard? Man, you know how I got, how I got to do it? He lying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks, thanks for calling. Right, Take care. Yeah, see you later. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you. I feel like it's going to be such a big drop off. Like me, Gable, Spencer Lee, if that, Yanni. We can make bands. Then you got like the big names Micah, Justin Fields, who else? Damn, Trey Lance. Kyle Pitts. Like all those guys. We can make $100,000 and then everyone else is making nothing. But they're going to find a way to balance it out though. I got shit. I got one around. like a hotel. More fucking, uh. What's up? Sticks. Sticks. Oh, what's up, man? Hey, man. How you doing? What up, man? How you doing? Where we at? The house of We're at the crib. The house of Naj B, baby. <laughs> Chill. No, I put I put that uh tanning oil. See, that's on your my problem. Face. Too dark to be having tanning oil. Put tanning oil on my face. Two days straight. You got that natural. Yeah. I've been cutting the hair for about what is it? A year now? Yeah, yeah a year. Yeah. A whole year. So I found out. I found it from some friends. Yeah, I was in a, in a garage and I brought a chair and they come here now. How do you turn this on? Is it the. Oh, okay. I was like, I was having like dreams of this stuff, this paperwork coming in. And I was actually even starting to lose sleep as like the time came closer. I was stressing out and I woke up and I was waking up in the middle of the night, stressed, like thinking it wasn't gonna come, just negative thoughts and stuff like that. Things that I shouldn't have been thinking about. Then uh, I was at, came a few days ago. I was at the gym, and then I came home, walking home. I saw it, saw it on the table. I was like, finally, and like finally, I can breathe. <laughs> you on camera, Stitch? Say hello. Cuts by Najee, Najee Brown. Yeah, man. I'm back. Now that now it's a real camera play. Now it's time to be on camera. But um, come back out though when we when I move into my new crib. We got that extra room, and then there's gonna be football games, tailgates. There's gonna be hella people everywhere. Minnesota man, go get your cut. Najeebrown.com. That's not your website. <laughs> Najee underscore twenty seven and the H J A I twenty seven. That's my Instagram, and then my cut Instagram. Naj cuts and the H J. Cuts. Look at this bad boy. Look at that. See that? Look at that's, that line. That's, that's $15 Christmas. in Minnesota. Hey, oh yeah. And that's $15. You ain't gonna that's get that nowhere else. Just, just put it out there. You ain't gonna get it nowhere else. Same like his life.
Four o'clock, how long we been gone? Oh my God, it's only two. It's early and we still got a long day. We got to park it. We got to park it for a little bit and just relax. We got to. Damn, we can't even relax. We're at the Minnesota Twins game. I'm about to throw this first pitch. I hopefully I do good. Shit, I don't know. No, I'm not really nervous. I just don't want to end up like 50 Cent. Oh yeah, hundred miles per hour. If I didn't wrestle, I would've been out there right now. Hey, <laughs> watch. If I get a chance, throw out, throw out, throw something. Hold on. So. The White Sox manager calling me right now. It's hard. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's hard. It's hard because you're always, as a parent, trying to change how you talk. Um, oh boy, it's, it's hard as they get older because you want to keep being real to them. You don't want to sugarcoat it. It's important not to sugarcoat it because what it is out there is no joke. So you never want to sugarcoat it. And I try not to sugarcoat it. I think I'm more, the, more I'm, my husband's more like lenient, more laid back, more, <laughs> I feel like I'm more, the mom, you know, uh, you know, this and that, or this or that, but I just want the best for them. They made me put a mask on, man. the first pace, that's crazy. Imagine that, imagine that. Keep it forever <laughs> until I lose it. <laughs> Major Leaguer. Yeah. You need it back? That's fine. Super proud, I mean, he's he's done an amazing job, just his uh, maturity as a wrestler, you know, in the last couple years. and. The work that he's put in and his dedication to, to being the best is um, is impressive. So it's been great for our program, obviously, and for the state of Minnesota and for the university. But um, really proud for him. Appreciate the twins. Shout out to the shout out to the twins, man. First pitch, such a good time. I got my homies with me here. You know how it goes. You can't not go wrong with the first pitch. This is pretty new over the next, last couple of years. So just kind of like our, our kind of initial greeting or reception area. But see Lesnar's uh, WWE belt, UFC. Um, the singlet he wore when he won his NCAA title. 
I mean, like any wrestler that gets to this level, like they have to have talent to wrestle at the Division One level, especially in the Big Ten Conference. And his talent was exceptional, no question about it. But, you know, the thing that made him different was, was really his mindset and his competitive spirit that have kind of separated him from, I think, a lot of other very, very good wrestlers. And so, you know, I think really like the evolution of him, like the change to where he is now, I think a, a big, I saw a big part of that happen his true freshman year when he, um, you know, it was unfortunate. Nobody wants to happen the way we lost in the Big Tens and the NCAAs. And I think about those matches, um, um, I believe he was the best wrestler. And, um, you know, maybe even deserved to win those matches when I look at him. And, but at the same time, I think what he, what he suffered there was, was the biggest part of his um, really progress that he's made since then and you know after coming off of those losses that year you know we talked and I think he realized the other things outside of just being a great athlete and and being a great wrestler that the things that he could do to continue to improve his his wrestling abilities and skills and a lot of it was his you know just taking his nutrition and his role and his conditioning and the work that he's putting into his lifting and his strength and you saw that change the next year was evident like he had transformed his body, he was different. He wasn't a, uh, not a boy, but a young man coming out of high school into college at the heavyweight scene, which was very tough, but all of a sudden he evolved into this, this beast. And um, a lot of it, a lot of it came because of that, that, that loss. And when I saw the change the following year, you could see it on the mat. He went out and he started dominating and just really scoring points and, you know, it was a shame because of COVID, we had the NCAA championships here, but because of COVID, it was canceled. You know, and that would have been his first NCAA title. And so um, that was disappointing for him, I know. But um, he made even bigger gains coming into this fall, last season. You could just see like he was able to really build off those strengths. And now he had the frame and the size. He always had the ability, but he continued to improve. and and building that area. And then this year you saw like just a, a completely different guy, just another step up, you know, and that's what's, what's really makes him special is he's never content with just where he's at. He knows that he always has room for improvement as great as he's done and as well as he's wrestling. He always continues to set goals for himself and strive to be the best. And, and um, that's what's made him who he is, you know, and I think anyone that's great, when you lose that desire, motivation to be the very, very best, then that's when things slow down and for him um, it's fresh in him and he has a lot that he wants to continue to prove and continue to build on and so that's what makes him special. Right now it's been a lot of um, transitions off his takedowns. I think he's the best in the world on, on his neutral position but for him to be able to capitalize and turn people off of a takedown is going to be huge and then to not get turned if he gets taken down. Um, so those are some of the things that we're focused on but other than that it's just Keep, keeping him sharp, conditioning, making sure that he's primed and ready to go. Um, it's been cool. We've kind of broken it up into training chunks, give him some time off, some time to do some striking, some time to do some footwork stuff and some other things, and obviously keeping him strong. But right now, wrestling-wise, it's mainly just focused on doing what he does best and um, trying to eliminate opportunities for guys to turn him on top. So, well, I think is that, you know, as a kid, you know, I tell people this all the time, you know, you, you if – it's not about winning and losing. It's about your performance. And if you, you know, I put him in situations when he was a youngster against older kids every week, because we, I didn't care, I didn't care about the winning and losing. I cared about his performance. And if he felt good about what he did, and he didn't, that loss didn't, didn't matter. It's about how you feel good inside, because the ultimate goal is, and I tell this to parents all the time, is you want your kid to keep coming back through that door. If he keeps coming back through that door, he'll develop the love, um, you know, for the sport. And, and ultimately, you know, um, yeah, it's fun to win, but you want to feel good about yourself. You know, it's like you know, a lot of times this freshman year, you know, I was like, yeah, you won the match, but yeah, how do you feel about your performance? Well, I could have done this, I could have done that, you know. And now the maturity is you know everything evolves and you know you learn and and now you know now that person just plows through with somebody for seven minutes it's a non-stop you know now you see it now you're taking that talent and you're working with it 
with putting hard work together, now it's an unstoppable force. When I used to come in this wrestling room, probably when it was built, I was probably a freshman, going into freshman year, and um, I would see all these guys' names on the walls. Guys like um, Brock Lesnar, Cole Conrad, Nelson, Tim Martin, and now, look at it. Eight years later, after Tony won his second title, my name's up there, solidified with all them guys, and I don't know. It's, it's crazy that, that the next the next recruit of kids, when I graduate, are gonna come in and be like, man, I wanna be like Gable. When I came in and I was like, yeah, I wanna be like that man, Brock Lesnar. And so, it's crazy that when, when everybody comes in, they're gonna see my name up there stamped forever. It doesn't go nowhere. And it's, it's like I'm a part of the, I don't know how many, 20 national champs Minnesota has, and the one to do it last is me. And the next one to do it next, we're walking this door next week. So we'll never know. But it's crazy that all the work is put in here, what people don't see on the camera, what people don't see on the, the highlight tapes, the the flow wrestlings, whatever, it's all put in here. The, you gotta break yourself to make yourself, you wanna be the champ, you wanna, be, you wanna put your name on that wall, you gotta do everything you possibly can in this room because talent don't just win. You gotta have talent and work. You gotta be a workhorse. If you're not a workhorse, you won't win. So, like I said, I'm up there with some good guys. My favorite, of course, Lesnar. He's done it all, he's done it all. UFC champ. WWE champ, NFL player. I hope to be like that and do it all too. That's crazy. I'm here in Edina at Code White. It's a good thing to get your teeth clean. That's what I like to do. Right now we're gonna get a whitening. You gotta keep the smile on your face. Um, like I say, you gotta look good at all times. This is step one looking good. I go by Cartier Banks. Um, I started Cold White Teeth Whitening back in November of 2018. Um, and I started the company because I enjoyed it, seeing people smile. I feel like sm smiling is one of people's biggest investments. Um, so when I started it, um, you know, I just wanted to just do something a lot bigger because I want to see people be the best who they can be. I realized that that's one of the number one things that, you know, that keeps them from doing certain things is a very big insecurity. So I'm glad that I'm able to help. Initially, I was gonna go buy ATMs from him. Cause we were talking about, it. I was like, yo, like, can, do you know anybody who got ATMs? I was like, he was like, yeah, I got some for you. And then boom, we started talking. Then I actually initially pulled up to the store and I seen, I was like, yo, this is actually like really nice. Cause you know, I know a lot of people that care about their teeth and I personally care about my teeth too. You know what I mean? So like, you know, like, let me join, you know, I asked him and he's like, yeah, we can get to it. And it was actually somebody else who was doing it with us and we were starting it off and it was pretty, it was going good. It was going good, really. it was like for like three months and then boom, COVID hit and we're like, dang. We had we had to tough it out, you know what I mean? Uh, initially the other partner like left and we're like, yo, like what's gonna happen? Like we were kind of like, not nervous, but we were like, we want to see what's happening in the future. But like, you know, we stuck together and like now it's like booming, like we got clients every day now. Like, Happy we stayed through, you know? I gotta come back. <laughs> See, I gotta come back for the full one. Yeah, we most definitely. Y'all some monkey. I need to start going back to the gym. Y'all some musty with dudes, man. Not me. I'm trying to get like y'all. Here, go white. Oh, you got a gift bag? No, I bought the. Oh, I was about to say, why well, didn't get a gift bag? It's his. It's his. Okay, can we use it again? I was just giving him a little promo. I said, go white. We're on our way to Apple Valley right now, my, my home city, to go uh, say what's up to some kids and have a little have a little meet and greet with everybody and have everybody come say what's up before I um, leave for Tokyo next July. So the I think this is a good time to have it. So we're we're gonna get to it. I like your shirt. It's a good one. <laughs> well, what you wrestle? Sixty. Sixty. That's about my weight, but I'm like 200 pounds bigger than you. I think it's awesome. I mean, all the things he's been doing, throwing out that first pitch for the Twins and just getting out here for the fans, I think it's really cool. You know, he's got a big following. None of these kids that look like us or have been through tough situations even have a chance to learn the sport before freshman year of high school, when they're in ninth grade, and as a lot of us know, that's too late. 
So no, it's amazing to have, to have a, a role model like that so that we can point guys to them and guys like RBY and, and things of that sort. Just be like, look, you guys can do this and here's someone doing it. You know, so it's even it's even better to have that role model too. Yeah, I just started wrestling last year. You like it? Yeah, it's really fun, and I, I kind of look to you for inspiration, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. It's it's kind of cool, like seeing someone from a hometown kind of go all the way. Well, and I just you. wanted to say, like, thank good luck, bro. and I want to see you win, bro. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. I just wanted to say, good luck on Tokyo. I appreciate it, bro. I've been watching you since about 2019, so. Uh, uh, I was wondering if you could sign this for me. Honestly, I mean, when you take a look at a guy like Gable Stevenson, I mean, for the community, it's it's pretty awesome. You know, this year in the NCAA, um, we had, what, five or six black champs or something like that. African-American champs, that's what you want to call them. Um, and for him to go represent the United States is going to be a huge thing, especially him to be favored to win it, too. So him being from this area, coming here, um, wrestling in our community, the stuff that he does, it's going to be pretty good to see him go out there and perform. So it's pretty nice to have all these people actually come out here today and be involved and really enjoy watching the guy wrestle. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's almost that time, Gabe. One week till I leave. Next Saturday. It is about that time. But that's the time I live for. My type of time. Do the games feel realer or farther away than they did the last time I saw you? Or is it just time is time is going fast. It's, it's like Livy. I wrestled in like three weeks, three and a half weeks, four weeks, something like that. Um, Time's going fast. From when I made a team to now, blink of an eye, like, I'm about to wrestle in like three, four weeks, so. But I'm ready to unlock the end. This is what we live for. You live for the, them high moments like this, so. It's only, only up. I think it's important for me to relate to all these young kids that want to come see me and meet me overall. I think when I was younger, I've always wanted to meet the high-end athletes that were on the that were on the rise. And when I was younger, we're actually we're actually good friends now. But there's a guy named Jordan Burroughs. He's a face of USA wrestling, probably the best USA wrestler ever. I told him we stayed in a hotel probably a month ago. We not yeah we stayed in a, a resort in Colorado probably a month ago. And uh, I told him I was like yo in 2012 like I was I was 12 years old. I was like, yo, in 2012, I, I, I walked up to you and bought your shirt right after you won the Olympics. And I'm like, I'm on the Olympic team now. Like, it was, it was like a it was like a weird, like, 360 spin. And we laughed and joked about it, and it, he thought it was crazy. And I, I still have this shirt. It's all I see is gold. It's blue. And, and his influence on me, for me to get here, was crazy. And now I'm in his position when he was younger to influence the next generation kids is crazy to me and I want to make sure that they get the best impression of me and I want to make sure that they understand that they can be that person too that that buys that one shirt and meets that person 10 years later and tells them that hey I'm on the Olympic team just like you were and so that's what that's what I'm going for